Champion, computer, that time of the week again, quick couple of questions. The key's making quite a bit of a noise here. Quick couple of questions. I actually have a whiteboard here, and I want to find out from you all today, or from you specifically that's busy watching. Number one, what would your life, as well as my life, but let's focus on your life, because in reality, you got to live your life, right? I have to live my life. So what would your life look like if, number one, you were to experience more freedom, number one, Number two, what would your life look like if you were to experience a greater level of fulfillment? Okay, so that's also ticked there. And then lastly, what would your life look like if you were to truly have some greater fun? So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into a talk that we did last week sometime at one of the companies that we're currently busy working with. It was an awesome time talking about developing emotional stability for greater glory, greater impact, greater income, as well as greater influence. Let's get into the video. Some of you seated here today, if not every single one of us that are listening or watching or that are in this particular session physically here, in this department, I almost guarantee you that God has been protecting you as well as myself from things you yourself did not even realize and know or have any comprehension about that you needed protection from. God's been protecting you of certain things. Just to give you perspective where I've personally seen this within my own life, some of you guys well know that I used to play soccer, Ebola, Ediski, and I watched a podcast the other day on YouTube where one of the guys, the guest that was on the podcast, was a guy that I used to play soccer with. And this guy was sharing bits and pieces of his story specifically in his playing days and in his soccer career. And I was shocked. And in this whole podcast, number one, my heart was going out towards this particular guy. And then secondly, I was just really thankful to God because I realized, wow, the reason why God didn't answer some of my prayers is because he was busy protecting me from things I didn't even know I needed protection from. And I'm so thankful that again, that God is not fake, that God is real, that God is willing at times to be the enemy in your life, to say no to you. Why? Because he sees the bigger picture. In the world of playing chess, we can just simply see what the next move is. Great chess players are like five moves ahead. God can see everything, my friend. And he knows that at times where maybe you are busy believing and trusting for a particular breakthrough within your life, that delay that he has in that particular area of your life, that delay is actually proof of his love for you. Because he's willing to delay it slightly over there so he can continue to work in your life or on your life over here so that when the breakthrough eventually essentially comes, you are able to hold that type of weight within your life. Why? Because the foundation was properly laid. So that wasn't part of the message that we prepared for you guys here this morning. But I want to quickly venture into your guys' lives. I know that in life there's something called meddling. You know what meddling is? Is Meddling is when you interfere with someone's life, when you should not be interfering. So I'm not trying to meddle in your life. I know that there's a fine line, but I'm going to be dancing on that line vigorously this morning, and it's going to be a great time, at least for me. But I want to ask you all a question here today, and please, I am begging you, don't answer this out loud, because you don't want the person next to you judging you, all right? So don't answer it out loud, but just kind of check yourself on the inside. And here's the question. Are you guys ready for the question? Three people nodded their heads. I only need one person, so I'm living in abundance over here. Here's the question. What would your life look like? And listen to the words. What did I say? Your life. Not, not my life, because I, I live my life. You live your life. So what would, what would your life look like? And what would my life look like? But let me just focus on you. What would your life look like if you were to experience a greater level of freedom within your life? What would your life look like if you were to experience some greater fulfillment within your life? What would your life look like? Oh, here's another one. What would your life look like if you were to have more fun in your life? Some of you, I say this respectfully to you, I love you and I want your lives to advance. Listen, some of you stopped having fun. 
You become so bogged up in your problems and your issues and your complaints and your turmoil, you've stopped having fun. You've left enjoyment in a cupboard where you never enter into. You've left it inside there. And by the way, when I say fun, let me explain to you what fun is. Fun is not you getting drunk out of your mind while you're watching the Boca play rugby so you can't eat meat. That's not fun. You think maybe that's fun, but real fun, my friend, is you living the life that God has actually called you to live. Even though it's challenging at times, you end up with an adventure of a lifetime. Like for example, again by a show of hands over here, how many of you have children? Okay. Would you like your child to live a miserable life or a fun life? Fun life. That's why you take them to a restaurant or a food place that has what? A play area. <laughs> Can you imagine taking them to these lawny restaurants like in Santon where they give you a size of meat that's this big and there's no play area. You've got 14 forks, you don't know which one to use over here. I'm like, really? You're picking, you know, 10 knives? What's this knife for? Three spoons? What do you do with all of these things? It's like a, a symphony of instruments that you can use over here. No, you take them to like a spur. By the way, spur doesn't pay me for saying this. They should, but they don't. But you can take you take them to spur. I mean, it's like ball pits there, right? Kids like doing a K. What's it? One of these? Boom! These WWE moves from like the top jungle gym over there. We went to a place this last uh, Sunday called Papachinos. See, on Linwood Road, massive play area over there for the kids. My daughter was having. Guess what she was having? Fun. And you know how much joy that brought to me? Seeing her get onto the slide and then starting to climb down the slide and having this... She's got teeth, but they're not long enough yet that you can't see them nicely when she smiles, right? But they're not, she's, she's not like you guys yet. You guys got nice teeth. Like she, she's, the teeth are still coming out over here. So when she smiles, it still looks like a bit of a toothless one. But there's loads of teeth inside there. I know because she bites sometimes, okay? So, so she was having a lot of fun. Now, if I feel like that about my daughter, I remember there was this cool scene where like, what happens is there's a slide that goes up here and a slide that goes up here. So I would take her and I put her up on this slide over here and then I run around to the other side and I look at her over here and then she sees me coming and she's like, she smiles like this and she's having fun. Side note, there was some point in time in your life where you were also having fun. The question is, what happened? What happened? Where did that get lost along this journey of life? Right? Some of you, I can just, I just sense it. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you are like, oh, bruh, just get over yourself. You've got no idea what I'm busy facing. How am I supposed to be having fun when my life is busy falling apart? Well, here's the good news. Jesus wants to help you get your life together again. <laughs> That's the good news. One of the saddest things in my occupation is that we share what God is telling me to share with people. It's the very thing that can transform their life. And 99% of people don't listen. And then years down the line, you get the call again and say, listen, please can you pray for me? Well, weren't you listening for the past two years? Have you done what we shared with you over the course of the past two years? Champion Campione, William over here from King and Me. I'm currently standing at one of our soccer school programs at one of the various children's homes locally here in the Pretoria area. And we've got some very exciting news that I want to share with all of you. We are going to be launching, Lord willingly now, in 2025, our King and Me United Youth Football Academy for the high school boys, specifically from various children's homes. It's going to be an exciting time. We're going to be getting the boys plugged into a specific league where it's all about empowering them to become the men that God has call them to be reliable, trustworthy, men of value, men of honor, men of courage, men who ultimately follow Jesus Christ and who become leaders within society, leaders who serve a bigger purpose than just themselves. So we are very excited. If this inspires you in any way, shape or form, then get in touch with me today. If you want to partner with us, sponsor any of the operational expenses, get in touch with us today. It indeed takes a village to raise a child, especially champions, both on and off the field of play. So get in touch with me today and let us collectively build a better future today. A rise and shine champion. Until next time, in between time, just know today, Nam Slanje, that your voice matters. Champion Campione, just want to say thank you for taking the time 
to watch the video over there. Let me know what was an aha moment, a revelation moment for you in that video. And don't forget to share this video, subscribe, and do all of those YouTube things. Until next time, just know today, which means today in Zulu, just know today that your voice matters.